We begin this hour with growing tensions in the Korean Peninsula. The United Nations Security Council is holding an emergency session over North Korea's latest missile launch. The emergency meeting comes at the request of Japan, the United States, and South Korea. U.S. Representative to the U.N. Nikki Haley called the escalation alarming. The United States is prepared to use the full range of our capabilities to defend ourselves and our allies. One of our capabilities lies with our considerable military forces. We will use them if we must. In the coming days, we will bring before the Security Council a resolution that raises the international response in a way that is proportionate to North Korea's new escalation. I will not detail the resolution here today, but the options are all known to us. If we are unified, the international community can cut off the major sources of hard currency to the North Korean regime. We can restrict the flow of oil to their military and their weapons program. We can increase air and maritime restrictions. We can hold senior regime officials accountable. This morning, the U.S. and South Korea followed up on North Korea's missile tests with missile tests of its own. Pyongyang claims to have launched an intercontinental ballistic missile Tuesday, a 4th of July gift to the Trump administration. That's when South Korea's president, who was just in D.C. last week, proposed responding with a joint military drill. R.T. Simone Del Rosario is at the White House with the latest reactions from the president. Tensions between North Korea and the United States have reached a tipping point as North Korea tests an intercontinental ballistic missile that theoretically has the potential to reach the United States. Before President Donald Trump took office in January, he tweeted that this event would not happen. Now that it has, Trump tweeted this about North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, saying, does this guy have anything better to do with his life? Hard to believe that South Korea and Japan will put up with this much longer. The U.S. Army and South Korea's military carried out a joint military drill Wednesday in response to Pyongyang, launching tactical missiles into the waters off the east coast of the Korean Peninsula. I think what the U.S. and South Korea are doing is basically flexing their muscle to show we're not afraid of North Korea. We also have big, bad weapons. But what they're doing is, is, is answering fire with fire in a region that is a powder keg. North Korea hasn't gained any useful military capability here. Uh, should they ever launch a strike, the consequences would be catastrophic for North Korea. So they don't expect them to gain any military advantage. Uh, what they're looking for and what they've achieved now uh, is status as a nuclear power. And that status will convey political advantages. Uh, clearly, Washington, Moscow, and uh, Beijing will have to cooperate on this issue uh, to bring the right kind of pressure to bear, to bring North Korea to the table. Through North Korea's state media, we've learned that Kim Jong-un is vowing never to put his nuclear weapons program on the negotiating table. And he's urging scientists to frequently send big and small gifts to the American bastards, as he says, meaning more missile tests. President Trump has made clear he's looking to China to put heavy pressure on North Korea, but has also said he's willing to act alone and today tweeted that trade between China and North Korea grew almost 40 percent in the first quarter. So much for China working with us, but we had to give it a try. Meanwhile, China and Russia are urging diplomatic talks, not military action. Those military drills that the United States and South Korea conducted earlier Wednesday, that was at the request of South Korean President Moon Jae-in. Moon was just here at the White House visiting with Trump last week, and both leaders vowed to make dealing with North Korea a top priority. In Washington, Simone Del Rosario, RT. The two-stage missile launched Tuesday by North Korea will be classified by U.S. intelligence as a brand new missile that has not been seen before, U.S. officials told CNN. The first stage of the missile is believed to be an op 17 liquid-fueled missile, which is well known to U.S. intelligence and has been previously launched by North Korea. Ahead of Tuesday's missile test, U.S. satellites had seen evidence the not 17 missile was being prepared for launch. But at some point prior to launch, the North Koreans attached a second stage atop that missile. The focus now is on the capability of that second stage, and how it technically contributed to making Pyongyang's latest test its first ever intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM, launch. 
A U.S. defense official said that the latest military assessment suggests the new North Korean missile has a theoretical range of about 5,500 kilometers, 3,400 miles. If the missile was shot at a more standard trajectory than Tuesday's test. A missile is classified as an ICBM if it can fly a minimum of 5,500 kilometers, which would mean that Pyongyang's missile is on the line between an intercontinental and intermediate range ballistic missile, IRBM. At that range, a North Korean missile could potentially strike Alaska. At the same time, Pyongyang is still several key developments away from actually deploying an ICBM that could carry a nuclear weapon. CNN has reported that the second stage had a separate 30-second burn cycle, which allowed the missile to travel the extra distance to classify it as an ICBM. Another defense official says they are still assessing whether the re-entry of the missile was fully controlled. For a missile to successfully strike a target it would have to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere without breaking up. During a United Nations Security Council meeting Wednesday, U.S. Ambassador to the UN Nikki Haley called Pyongyang's ICBM missile test a clear and sharp military escalation. She said that U.S. military action remained on the table to stop North Korea from threatening the U.S. and its allies. The U.S. is prepared to use the full range of our capabilities to defend ourselves and our allies, Haley said. One of our capabilities lies with our considerable military forces. We will use them if we must, but we prefer not to have to go in that direction. We have other methods of addressing those who threaten us, and of addressing those who supply the threats. Haley called for an escalated diplomatic and economic response and said the U.S. would have a new U.N. resolution in the coming days. Haley said the U.S. will also look at any country that chooses to do business with this outlaw regime, and specifically called out China, noting that 90 percent of trade with North Korea comes from China. Much of the burden of enforcing U.N. sanctions rests with China, she said. We will work with China but we will not repeat the inadequate approaches of the past that have brought us to the stark day. At the Pentagon, spokesman Navy Captain Jeff Davis, confirmed Wednesday that the missile was not one we've seen before. Davis told reporters the ICBM was detected and tracked for 37 minutes, the longest flight time for a North Korean missile. It was launched from Pangan Aircraft Plant, about 100 kilometers, 62 miles north of Pyongyang, the first time the North Koreans had used that site for a missile test, he said. Davis condemned the launch as escalatory and destabilizing, as well as dangerous. This missile flew through busy airspace used by commercial airliners, he said. It flew into space, it landed in Japan's exclusive economic zone in an area that is used by commercial and fishing vessels, all of this completely uncoordinated. On Monday evening, a U.S. Pacific Command statement initially described the missile as an intermediate range, but further intelligence assessments changed the classification. Upon further assessment, it was judged that it was likely capable of going in excess of 5,500 kilometers, which therefore makes it an ICBM, Davis said. The imagery showing an OP-17 is in part what led the U.S. to initially believe it was a shorter-range missile. North Korea announced Tuesday it had successfully tested an ICBM for the first time, which Pyongyang claimed could reach anywhere in the world. North Korean state media said the missile reached an altitude of more than 2,800 kilometers, 1,741 miles before it splashed down in the sea off the Korean peninsula 930 kilometers, 578 miles, from the launch site. The U.S. and South Korea announced they had conducted a joint exercise in response to the launch, a demonstration that South Korea said was intended as a strong warning against North Korean provocation.